Bigfoot Society would like to thank the following sponsors for helping make the podcast possible. The Singular Fortean Society has combined open and honest paranormal investigation and journalism since 2016. Visit the Society at Singular Fortean for all the latest weird news and more. Come with us and investigate the impossible. Lauren Smith is the hostess for Nightcaller's Bigfoot Radio, which has been on air for over a decade and has completed over 300 shows. Lauren brings with her a unique viewpoint given that she is not only the daughter of one of the veteran female Bigfoot researchers in the South, but she has been conducting field research since she was a preteen some 20 years ago. Nightcallers is a Bigfoot world favorite, and along with interviewing researchers and witnesses, often features interviews with guests from the documentary film and entertainment industry. Lauren also does a vidcast segment called Nightcallers, which features real encounters sent in by viewers. You can find all of this and more at nightcallersproductions.com. Welcome to a special episode of uh, Bigfoot Society Podcast. This is outside of our normal Monday uh, episode. What this is going to be is this is going to be kind of a sneak peek into uh, different interviews and uh, content I made for the March duration of uh, the Bigfoot Society Patreon. So you'll be hearing different clips just to give you a sneak peek into what's going on in there. And uh, I'll be honest, some of the interviews I have in there are too good not to share with the rest of the cryptozoology community. So this is my way of being able to share a little bit of that at this time. So anyways, I hope you like this uh, extra episode. It's a little bit late, but hey, got a lot going on. So sorry about that. But again, this is the uh, sneak peek episode of March 2021 of all the extra content that's in the Bigfoot Society Patreon. Hope you enjoy. And, um, yeah, if this is your first episode, you know, definitely check us out on uh, on YouTube. Uh, just go into the link tree, and you could subscribe to the YouTube there account and uh, see all the video version of the interviews. And also, uh, a lot of our stuff goes on on Instagram. There's all sorts of going stuff going on. Definitely check out... Uh, Instagram.com forward slash Bigfoot Society. Our link tree has all the stuff you don't want to miss out on. But uh, here's a preview of the interviews for the Patreon in March 2021. All right, first interview snippet we have preview uh, is with Jesse Desmond from Alaska. Uh, this is some uh, segments from our uh, kind of have a Bigfoot U.S. tour going on. And um, first we're going to hear from Jessie Desmond. Uh, she's going to share a story and a little bit about a conference that's going to be coming on uh, later on the year. All right, go ahead. All right. So a quick story uh, that's called The Bigfoot Child. That's um, and it, it was related to me by one of the guys over at the uh, visitor center in Ninana. And it was it's really common for people who live along the waterways to travel from like Ninana over to Copper Center uh, through the waterways. And then you know they might overnight at Copper or overwinter at Copper Center and then mm. in the summer return back, right? So it's really a really common practice. And this story is of a woman, this older woman who went went over to Copper Center to do her uh, salmon fishing, right? And she overwintered there. And one, like one day she like went out to get firewood and there was like this Bigfoot child that was Whoa. abandoned or lost or something. And she was, mm -hmm. she was scared of it. And then she, so she kind of like went back inside and kind of kept an eye on it. Uh, from inside and it like there were there weren't any others around and she didn't know what what all was going on so she brought it inside to warm it up because it was like pretty cold out okay. and and there weren't any others that came around looking for it so she had no idea mm. like what was going on but this thing would uh like help her move wood and that sort of thing oh right? real? wow yeah. Huh. And, and like they, they just could, they kind of bonded. And then in the, when the summertime came around, they went back to Ninana and she went back with this Bigfoot, you know, that she had 
kind of collected over the winter. Oh, and yeah. apparently um, she had, she had decided like she was old enough that she decided uh, that she, she didn't want to go back and forth too much, like anymore or very mm-hmm. much at least. So she mainly stayed in the Nana. And from what I was told, this thing uh, wore a couple articles of clothing and I don't know what exactly that means. Mm. Um, and it could understand a couple words. Like she trained wow. it to understand a couple words. And I think it could say one or two words, you know, like maybe wood or something. And sure. it, so there was like a little bit of communication and it mainly just stuck with her, but sometimes she'd send it to like the uh, outpost to, to get like groceries or something or to carry like the heavy stuff with her. That's, That's so cool. wild. And then when she passed, it just uh, it just walked off into the woods and no one ever saw it again. That's wow. Has that ever been like, is that in any books? Like that's, I've never heard that I before. I don't it's really weird. Think I've ever seen it in a book. Um, wow. Really? He told me so that he, it had just been passed down to him. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, did yeah, you like say <laughs> from Nana? did you say what year about that took what, like a year or not really? Um, he said he thought it, it was from around 1860. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. So that would have, that would have been the majority would have just been uh, natives in the area, but there would have been some miners and stuff. So that would have been right around the time that uh, Seward bought Alaska. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that context. Oh man. That is an awesome story. Thank you. That's really cool. Yeah. No problem. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, thanks for hanging out. This yeah. has been a good time. Uh, um, best of luck with the uh, uh, the Boreal Bigfoot Expo coming up in Fairbanks, and that is September, early September. Uh, date again September on that? 4th. Is September fourth. That is awesome. Yeah. We will definitely uh, get the word weekend. out. Yeah, we'll definitely get the word out about that for you because awesome. um, not a lot of Bigfoot stuff happening yet. There's a few, so anyone that happens is going to be pretty special. So I'm glad you're doing it. Big thanks again to Jesse for coming on and uh, sharing some stories about not only Bigfoot in Alaska, but also ghosts as she does a little bit of both. Uh, Definitely check out the book that she has written. I'll put that in the show notes about uh, a ghost hunter's professional ghost investigator, the professional ghost investigator by Jesse Desmond. Um, I'm going to leave that all in here because I keep it real. But Jesse, uh, thanks again for coming on. Next up, we have Jackie Tonks, a uh, Bigfoot researcher from the UK. Hour and 10 minutes of high quality content, and Bigfoot research stories that just blew my mind. And this is definitely one of them where I'm like, this should not exist just in the Patreon. But I'm going to share a little bit of it with you. Jackie was so fun to talk to. Uh, you're really going to enjoy this. The, the excitement stuff really started to happen uh, with 2014. I went out with Tom Contral. Tom, I've met Tom on the first Oh, day. yeah, Tom. totally. Cool. And we went, quite a few of us met up, and, and we went um, just outside Orleans, there's a logging road up there. Uh, is it the OS or a G road? Anyway, the Orleans to, oh, I can't remember the name. Anyway, this was in 2014. Um, and we got there and you could clearly see what looked like Bigfoot footprints within no minutes. Way. Like over the anthills, these big footprints. Like, Whoa, this is oh, good. Wow. And then about, it's about three, four days in, we were regularly would drive to Willow Creek just to get a meal, which is about 40 miles away. Okay. Now the logging road's really good. It's sort of, you know, um, oh, what do you call it? I don't know what you call it. It's like gravelly stuff, but it can drive quite fast on it. You can I probably gotcha. do yep. 50 quite safely. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, a bit to the campsite, you have to go really slow. But um, we were going along there. It was 24 in the afternoon. 
and I suddenly see from a distance and I'm really annoyed because it was the I was just charging my camcorder batteries <laughs> and I've all mm. all the previous times that I'd had it jammed in with my neck support thing and I'm like, oh no and I could see this these things from a distance and they look like two men in all in one suits, dark suits, with the hood up, but Whoa. bare feet. And I said to Tom, God, what are these idiots doing? They're killing their feet on there. God, do you think they're drug runners or something? He starts laughing and he said, what are you here to look for? Or something oh, like that. Oh, that's awesome. And, and, yeah, what are you here oh, to yeah, look for? Oh, yeah, it gets for? further than that, though. They then ran out into burnt trees and then panicked because they couldn't get cover because it was literally burnt out for miles on the one side, but not on oh, the other. yeah, sure. And then they suddenly came back in front of the car. And I'm talking, I got my head turned to Tom. I heard him yell. And suddenly they're right in front of the car. And he slams on the brakes and manages to stop. And he's skidding because it's like quite, you know, um, gravelly. And for literally for about a second and a half, they just stood there because they don't know where to go. And you tell they were panicking. They were like roof flapping. And their, their, their face is like twitching. Well, the one you could, I was just looking at the, you know, was flicking to the two, but the one I was looking at mainly. And you could see the face is twitching. They were that close. They were panicking. They didn't know what to do. And then they shot down a really steep slope, which um, afterwards, it's funny, people do this. I've read it very consistent. People will see them and not stop because your brain's going, oh, <laughs> not to yeah, that. But it doesn't know say, what to do. Yeah. You know, part of my brain is also wouldn't have said stop because a bit of things, were they just really weird looking drug runners because your brain's trying to rationalize yeah, it. It's got to be something else. Seeing. Yeah. But also, you don't. But for Tom, it was the novelty. He hardly, like, oh, yeah, I'm glad you've seen them sort of thing. He hardly reacted because um, Tom's seen them loads of times. And I uh, As I said, that interview with Jackie is one of the most craziest, like, a person just sharing stories and, like, oh, and then this happened. And you're like, what? Do you even realize what you're saying? This is amazing stuff. Like, it probably one of my most favorite interviews uh done for the patreon so thanks again to jackie for coming on uh next up we had my friend nash hoover come on and talk for a few minutes about the thylacine which uh, is definitely his favorite cryptid and this is for the uh, cryptid case files um section for the uh patreon but uh definitely enjoy a few minutes as we listen to nash talk about the uh, thylacine now they were uh, declared extinct in 1936. That's when the last one died uh, in okay. the uh, zoo in uh, Tasmania. It was wow. Benjamin was its name. It was uh, actually uh, locked out of its uh, enclosure and uh, pretty much succumbed to the elements. And no way. So the whole the whole species oh. was pretty much eradicated by humans. Um, they were pretty much hunted to extinction on uh, Tasmania, uh, mainland Australia. They went extinct just because of when the dingo was introduced and they had a competition for food source. Um, Jeez. they were also a lot of people don't talk about this, but they were also uh in uh Papua New Guinea as well. Uh, thylacine, oh, really. Um, there okay. actually are uh, um sightings, it's it's not as much as southern Australia and Tasmania, but there are there are sightings in in Papua New Guinea. Oh, you know, they're um, still there, they thylacines. gotta be still there. Um, I so mean, it's it's they? quite a it's quite a broad area that these things are seen in. Mm. Um, and a lot of people look at them and they think that it is a canine or it's, you know, it's a tiger. You know, they're called, they're called the Tasmanian tiger because of the stripes in their back. Okay. They look very wolf-like, but they're actually a marsupial. They're cold, They're more related to the, uh, oh, yeah. the kangaroo than anything else. You know, they actually have the uh, exterior pouch that they, you know, they, you know, that they have like the, you know, and their, and their babies are called joeys and, you know, they're, you know, raised and born into the, into the pouch. And that's wild. Um, they're just so cool. And like, they're like, their jaw, like their mouths are huge. I mean, they were, they were a carnivorous marsupial. Like it's, you know, that's one of the reasons why they were hunted to extinction in Tasmania was they, they there actually was a bounty on these things because oh, all wow. the, all the European settlers and, and whatnot came in there and they were, you know, they were killing their livestock. So they, you know, they pretty much put a bounty on these things and they were just wiped out. Big thanks again to uh, my friend Nash Hoover from Chasing Legends for coming on and uh, chatting a little bit with the, the patreon members about the thylacine uh definitely check out uh got the link in the show notes for you check out his youtube series uh the chasing legends youtube series is uh, amazing content for the cryptozoology fan and researcher in um 
they've made it absolutely free. So definitely support these guys uh, as much as you can. Next up, we have uh, another friend, uh, Mr. Eli Watson, came on for the other part of Cryptic Case Files to talk about the Cryptid the Goat Man. Uh, very interesting conversation. Always fun to talk to Eli. He's involved with a lot of really cool stuff right now. Of course, you probably know about Cryptid Campfire, uh, his podcast, and also he's starting to get involved with things such as Chasing Legends and also Small Town Monsters uh, as well. So definitely uh, keep an eye out on uh, Eli and uh, let's listen to him chat for a few minutes with me about the Goatman Cryptid. So it's funny because Goatman is something that's kind of special to me in a way. Um, mm. My father is from Kentucky and I think okay. the the Pope Lick monster, as it's known, is probably the most famous Goatman legend. Um, and so I was talking to my father about it today, actually. Um, and he told me that, jokingly that he thought Goatman was real. Um, and so I was like, oh, that's interesting. I was like, D what do you know about Goatman? He's like, oh, I went up to the bridge where it's supposedly at. Oh, no. Yeah, when he was a kid because mm. he used to live out there. So... It's in Louisville, Kentucky, in a little neighborhood known as Fisherville. Uh, as far as to why it's known as the Pope Lick Monster, I really have no idea. I couldn't find an answer to that. And even my dad doesn't know. But basically, there's this train track that my dad referred to as the J-Town Trestles. And it's about 80 feet. Um, I got another report that it was over 100 feet tall um, mm. before you get to the road below and so and it's a it's a railroad track i mean it's a trestle you know so trains come by and i mean obviously if you're in the middle of it you literally have nowhere else to go but down and wow. for whatever reason there is the myth of the goat man that used to that that haunts that place he walks around with an axe you know it's it's a cool visual but again thanks to eli for coming on i forgot got how uh it that gets a little that interview gets a little intense so uh be ready for that one but it's a good one it's a good one eli is a good dude uh definitely check out his uh podcast cryptidcampfire.com i'll have the links for that in the show notes as well coming up next uh the u.s bigfoot tour about alaska is actually i had two guests on it in march and I had the privilege of talking to Larry Beans Baxter, uh, who is, he's the author of Abandoned, uh, the history and horror of the Port Chatham, Alaska incident. Um, which if you don't know about that, you need to start looking that up. But uh, Larry was able to talk to me at a really fun uh, interview with beans about bigfoot in alaska so i'm sure you will definitely enjoy this uh we'll go ahead all right well we are chatting for a few minutes we've got beans with us uh beans to his friends but larry beans baxter and you may recognize this guy uh, if you're seeing this on video um from the show uh alaska triangle correct beans yes yes uh the um the episode uh, about the uh, Port Chatham incident, uh, which is just an amazing uh, Bigfoot story. You really got to check it out. And uh, you've you've actually written a book about that, correct? I did. I, I don't live very far from Port Chatham as the, the crow flies. And a lot of the former residents from Port Chatham actually, you know, moved to other villages not too far from me. So when I found out about Port Chatham, I really just got the bug. I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta know more about this. So I started researching it. I started, mm. you know, digging into it a little bit and I got some information. So if you Google Port Chatham, there's only so much information. Like eventually once you hit page two or three of Google, you've just seen the same stories, <laughs> you know, regurgitated over and over again. Right. And so what I've done is I've actually gone out. I've, I've, talk to people i've you know done some research and investigation and i have some stuff available in the book that's not on the internet uh so mm, it's, that's, it's, that's awesome yeah 
and it's new information that you know as far as i know you know nobody's really that privy to or they're not they're not posting it on the internet yeah, right <laughs> um so yeah i'm really excited about it i think it's really going to be a successful book and i kind of you know, as we were talking um, before about the legend of Boggy Creek and how, mm, how yeah. much it should. So I kind of modeled the book after the legend of Boggy Creek where you have, oh, cool. yeah, you have kind of a, a scary dramatic reenactment. And then we'll talk, you know, in the book about the history, the actual history of the place and what happened nice. there and who nice. lived there. And then, you know, again, maybe going to a scary reenactment where, you know, it's kind of a, almost like a horror story, but it's based on real events and real people uh, mm. that died and went missing in the area. But then, you know, you have the, the nonfiction, you know, meat and potatoes. This is, this is what is going on there. And this is, you know, how the area uh, was founded and how it was discovered and the, you know, the industry that was in there and how it worked. And I just, it's, as far as I know, it's the only nonfiction book on the subject. So that's um, amazing. I, yeah, that's I amazing. Hope, I hope people really enjoy it. I know I had a blast writing it and yeah, and I'm getting more information all the time too, because people find, oh, you're into Port Chatham. Well, you know, oh, now, now you're the guy. Yeah, so it's yeah. like part two coming out. Yeah. yeah. More it's history and horror in Port Chatham. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like if you if you saw the Alaska Triangle episode or like pretty much this this incident has been talked everywhere. I mean, it's like it's been in other podcasts all over the place. Everyone loves this story. So if you want to hear more or read more, you got to check out Beans' book. Uh, we also want to chat for a few minutes. So everyone, of course, we got through 2020. Uh, things are getting better. And we missed a lot of Bigfoot conferences. But Beans, uh, you're here to tell us about a few that are coming up that are pretty awesome. So if you wouldn't mind sharing about both of those. So first up is... In June in Medellin Falls, Washington, it's called the Medellin mm. Falls Bigfoot Festival. It's a Bigfoot festival and a film festival. Uh, from what I understand, the the tickets are already sold out, but the tickets are only for the speakers, and mm. the speakers are going to be in the Cutter Theater. Uh, you you got to have a ticket to get in to see the speakers, but there's going to be so much more going on. They're going to have uh, vendor booths. All the speakers are going to have uh, booths out outside. So okay. you can just walk up and talk to me or Adam Davies or oh, wow. you know, anybody, anybody yeah. else that's going to be there. Uh, Shane Corson, I believe is going to be there. Nice. Uh, Thomas Seawood, uh, Amy Boo. Uh, you can just walk up, hang out with us, uh, you know, uh, talk to us, tell us your Bigfoot stories. Uh, and they're also going to have free Bigfoot movies playing in the movie theater in town. That oh, you can yeah. Just walk into and sit down and watch. So I'm sure there's going to be all kinds of uh, cool, like, uh, like carnival food, not carnival food, fair food, stuff like there's that. Gotta you know? yeah. There's gotta be get, something. There's gotta be something. Come get you a fried banana or something. There you go. Oh, there, ooh, there's going to be all works. kinds of outdoor activities. I think they're going to have some stuff for the kids to do. Uh, maybe even some uh, track casting classes, stuff like that. That'd be legit. Uh, yeah. So I think, I think it's going to be a really good time. Like I said, the tickets have already sold out. So people are just clamoring. They, they want to get out and they want to talk Bigfoot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's going to be June uh, 19th and 20th okay. in Medellin Falls, Washington. Okay. And then later in the year in September, there's going to be the Boreal Bigfoot Expo in Fairbanks, Alaska. Ah. And as far as I know, this is the only Bigfoot uh, conference that's in Alaska ever. It's going to be the that's first That's crazy, one. dude. Yeah. Wow. So I'm going to be there speaking at that. Um, okay. And also the Sasquatch tracker, Mr. Thompson, he's going to be uh, there yeah, yeah. and yeah. which we've, we've corresponded quite a bit over the years, but we've never actually met in person because mm. he, he, li he lives in Toke and I live in uh, on the Kenai peninsula. And that's like, okay. I don't know, it's something crazy, like 15 hour drive or something like that. Jeez. So we've never actually like met face to face. So this is, this is going to be, uh, it's going to cool. be a meeting of the mind. Cool. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Oh, I love that. That, so those are two two big things uh, to look forward to. Thank you for sharing those with us. Uh, let's uh, if you feel comfortable time to hit up some conferences, uh, but it's all about what you're comfortable with, but uh, man, that sounds exciting. I'm excited. I know I'm going to the Van meter visitor festival 
this September in uh, Van Meter, Van Meter, Iowa. That's my festival. But yeah, I uh, love that sounds, story. You do? I live yeah. like very close to it, so it's my thing. Yeah, but check it out if you ever get in the lower 48 in Iowa in September 25th. It's the place yeah. to go. I've got some friends that live in Iowa, so that, that oh might, really that might happen. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Oh, totally. Well, maybe maybe I'll meet him. You'll have to say, "Hey, look for the guy with the Bigfoot Society shirt on that's walking <laughs> around the festival." But Beans, thanks so much for uh, for hanging on a little bit longer, and uh, uh, we'll definitely be checking out your book and uh, looking into those festivals as well. But uh, thanks again, man. Awesome, loved it. Thanks for having me. You got it. And that's our preview of March 2021 for the uh, Patreon extra content. Definitely take a few minutes to look through all the links I've put in the show notes uh, of all the cool stuff that's going on, all the great uh, content that you can see from uh, these guests I had on. Um, If you want to hear the entirety, which would be a few hours more of all these interviews, you can always go to patreon.com forward slash Bigfoot society. There's still a spot or two, I believe in the $5 uh, tier. So you can get in there quick. If those are full, then you can always uh, join the $10 tier. Um, But the $5 tier does get you shut out in the podcast. So it's kind of a special adopt early uh, support adopter thing. But again, thanks for spending a few extra minutes with me uh, to, Here's some snippets from March 2021 Patreon content. Have a good one, all.